Hey y'all, it's Kate at Kate's Garden Chicken and Cat Rambles, and I'm just showing off a little bit of my fat cat Soxy here. It's about probably a good 20 pounds, maybe more. He's a big guy. He's eight. But I wanted to show you, I've mentioned it, this is the spur that column, not column, squirrel, don't, okay, I'm hot. Can't think that Laddie Roo ripped off when he went to a uh, flog me the other day, strictly because he hates the rain boots, work slash work boots I use that have little chickens on them. I'm gonna have to get a solid color pair, I guess. But it's spring, and some days he's sweet as pie, other days. But he came at me, and I shut the door to the coop really quick, so he ended up flogging the chain link. And this is the spur that he ripped off. I think that's just a blood stain there. I probably should dip that in some peroxide, but it's been cleaned and alcoholed. Anyway, he was treated. It was loose, but at first I couldn't tell what, oops, sorry. We'll keep looking at the cat. What he was bleeding, where he was bleeding from. And I thought, hmm, maybe it's a talon. I know in another video I kept saying talon, but I meant spur, but uh, but he was dropping quite a bit of big blood splatter. So I picked him up and like I said, in the video, if you watched it, I brought him in the house. Well, first I dipped his feet in the outside water. He had, there's big buckets that they just drink out of. And yes, I did dump it. I didn't leave it all gross and bloody. But I dipped his foot in there first to get any dirt or poo or anything off so I could see where he was bleeding from. Because if it was something small, it was just going to depend on, you know, was he just, whatever, how I dealt with it. Anyway, he was dripping quite a bit of blood. So I picked him up and brought him in the house. And... Washed his feet in a chlorhexidine soap that's for, really you can use it on any animal, um, dogs, cats, bird, I used it because it was bird legs, I didn't get his feathers, but it's an anti-fungal, anti-yeast, anti-bacterial um, wash, strictly for animals. So I washed his legs really good, and then I noticed that this was really loose, and the more I looked, I realized it was just hanging by probably here where it's the bloodiest a uh, little piece of flesh and I know that you can twist off uh, with a pair of pliers and you know especially when they're smaller you can twist off just this bony this you know, it's like a heart like a nail really like someone's fingernail hard piece and that leaves like the little flesh bud that it grows from and it'll grow back but you can twist these off with a pair of pliers and typically they kind of pop off but because this one's a little more bloody I think it probably damaged that little uh the little bud that these spurs grow from so that's okay with me which means it probably won't grow back and if it does it might grow back weird and if I have to I will remove it you know as needed but anyway he came in he was a perfect angel the whole time I held him I washed his feet I have some uh, kitchen shears that are for cutting into like large pieces of meat or cutting bones if you're deboning something or whatever. But uh, I use that and it snipped off quite easily. It didn't really bleed any more than it had been, but I, once again, after I snipped it off, I washed it really good with the chlorhexidine soap, rinsed it, then I uh, put some cornstarch on it. And held it with a paper towel and it quickly quit ble bleeding so anyone dealing with your chickens whether you're dealing with a bumble fit or an injury or a cut um, please make note that you can use just regular old cornstarch like you buy at the store and you can sprinkle that on there and it's amazing how quick it will stop blood flow so he quit bleeding uh, once it quit bleeding and I was sure it would stop bleeding I rinsed off the cornstarch um, you know, as a human, I was tempted to put, you know, dab alcohol on it, but I didn't. You know, I didn't want to make him, cause him any pain, and he was being so good. So, I rinsed it off really good, dried it really well, and then I used the blue coat uh, wound spray that you can use for chickens, horses, goats, any kind of, really, uh, livestock or animal, really. And sprayed it down real good, and I carried him around, and I actually lifted his leg up and and blew on it to help it dry and he didn't flinch he didn't try to peck me he was actually quite good but 
so after one year this is right at an inch so this is about how much a spur grows and I'm assuming that at that rate of growth when you see you know two three inch really long curved spurs that's probably a you know uh, at least a two to three year old rooster and this is really kind of blunt but he has inflicted a lot of little punctures and wounds on me with it and I'm trying to remember not to go in there in my red crocs and not to wear my rain or work boots even if it's muddy and to not have shorts on but when it's hot humid summer and I just I gotta get in there real quick for something I just you know I think my ADHD means I just you know impulsive I just run in there and do it so I've gotten better about grabbing my little mini rake that I use for raking out the coop when I'm cleaning it and just using it the blunt side and keeping him away from me but Typically, if I'm not wearing either of those shoes and I'm moving slow, he won't attack me. And he's so easy to catch. I can just pick him up and carry him around while I'm doing stuff. But I'm not going to miss this spur. But yeah, there is a one-year-old rooster spur. And of course, it was growing this way. And so I'm assuming when he flogged, you know, they bring their feet up. So this spur ended up going up going up this direction and catching on the fence so it ripped it but that little buddy spot was oops, sorry Socky like what the hell would you shut up I'm taking a nap I don't care about a spur I got a fang that big yeah I know you got a fang that big cat so anyway I can't say I'm gonna miss it he doesn't even seem to be any worse for the wear um I picked him up yesterday or last night I guess really and I had taken out a uh a, a wet washcloth and I just you know wiped off the area made sure there was no dirt or anything on it um, did my normal little mic check and then I sprayed another gave, gave it another spritz of blue coat though it seems to be scabbed over or healed or you know whatever little chicken legs do um, he doesn't seem to be any worse for wear he didn't even seem to like flinch when I was touching it because I did feel around with it on my finger making sure there was not like any little bone spike or you know uh, making sure there was a scab that I didn't feel like a, a you know, I gave it a couple little squeezes kind of like that on his leg to make sure that I didn't feel like any you know soft spots like there could be a pus pocket or infection he seems just fine but um yeah I just wanted to show it off here Get a little closer very interesting and it's pretty much just like our fingernails just uh I guess if our fingernails grew that thick and that sharp, you know, there's some people who, who have their nails done where they look like that, and I think that's, uh, I think it's ridiculous and stupid, you know, who wants talent, really? I'd be poking myself in the eye or scratching myself. What's that? Yeah, Soxy's like, hmm, he's secretly thinking, that looks feel good, Mom. You don't want me to scratch you with the spur? Yeah? Look, you're getting spurred. You're getting spurred by a chicken. He's like, what? Ooh, that feels good. Keep going, keep going. Should I put this on the stick like a little back scratcher so anyway i'm gonna let you guys go this is just a silly video showing the spur i think a lot of people who don't have chickens or even if they do have chickens very seldom see them up close like this but yeah but once again this is a spur from a one-year-old rooster bye y'all have a great afternoon um hello welcome and howdy to all my uh all y'all who are new subscribers thank you so much Share the videos to anybody else who likes chickens and silly ramblings about cats and chickens and gardens and whatever. I really appreciate it, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Bless you all. Bye.